Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Why No One Plays. I do apologize for taking a really long time to talk about this guy, but when I first started making League videos, you guys know Why No One Plays was the flagship series. It was basically the only type of League videos I've made at the time, and this was before I had any meaningful viewer base, so I didn't want to like copy Exil since he made a Why No One Plays Ivern already. Now that I've been able to find my own niche, I think it's safe to say I'm not really stealing anyone's ideas anymore. So after a very, very long time, we're finally going to be making an episode on Ivern, the Green Father, the most unique and impish jungler in League of Legends. Not before we talk about today's sponsor though. This video is sponsored by Buff. Buff is an app that lets you earn points while playing games like League, Valorant, Fortnite, Dota, PUBG. If you don't play at least one of these games, then congrats, you have some self-respect, unlike the rest of us. It's linked to Overwolf, so if you're already using things like Poro Fester, this should fit nice and cozy right next to it. Simple premise, play games and complete challenges. It's just like the mission section of the League client that gives you event tokens, only this one earns you buff points which you can use to exchange for things like Steam credit, Riot points, gift cards, skins, game keys, and even physical items like peripherals such as keyboards and gaming mice. It's a very simple program that requires nothing other than an installation and you can get right to play. So if you want to get your hands on skins without having to pay for them, I suggest you click the link down below in the video description. But with that out of the way, let's get back to talking about Ivern. As the game continues to release more and more champions, the average pick rate of every champion decreases over time, since there's still only 10 picks per game with a roster that now exceeds 150 in count. But even so, very few live in a perpetual state of irrelevance, and while he did get a minor blip in popularity at the start of Season 11, Ivern may very well be in contention for the least played champion in League of Legends right next to York and Skarner. Despite this, I actually have some very kind words to say about him, don't get the wrong idea. I hate this guy and wish the god Willow killed him instead of turning him into a tree, but from a gameplay standpoint, he is a very impressive champion design. To be able to put a controller, the class with even more role exclusivity than Marksman, in the jungle which is filled to the brim with solo carry champions and actually work, is no small accomplishment. As we know, the jungle is the most enigmatic and complex role in the game, since it's the only one without a dedicated laning phase. But for better or worse, this allows a wide variety of champions to call it home. The jungle is the only role that hosts all 7 classes within its active roster. Fighters like Rek'Sai and Jarvan, mages like Talia and Karthus, slayers like Kha'Zix and Viego, tanks like Zac and Sejuani, marksmen like Kindred and Graves, specialists like Fiddlesticks and Nidalee, and last but not least, controllers, represented by pretty much only Ivern. To this day, no other controller has been able to find lasting employment in the jungle. And the way he does it is pretty funny. Unlike other junglers who have to farm camps through killing them, Ivern can't damage jungle monsters in any way. Instead, his passive friend of the forest basically gives neutral camps a peaceful send-off while receiving the full gold and experience as if he took them down the normal way. In exchange though, he loses a portion of his health and mana. Also, starting level 5, whenever he clears the red or blue buff, he can give a second copy of it to one of his teammates. Ivern literally farms camps by saying hi to them. This means he's pretty much the only champion who doesn't require clear optimization, such as kiting camps or timing your abilities, since he doesn't need to fight them. It also means he doesn't need any leash from his teammates at level 1. However, in lieu of not being punished for inefficient clears, he can't get faster than his passive's time scaling and smite cooldown, which can secure the camp immediately rather than having to wait for the grove to fully mature. The main reason catchers and enchanters can never realistically be viable in the jungle is mostly due to them having terrible clears. You look at Janna, Blitzcrank, or Soraka, they have negative DPS and will probably spend 20 years on a single camp. Thanks to Ivern's passive, the rest of his abilities don't need to be designed around sustaining him in the jungle, which to me is genius. Instead of taking damage from camps, he has to instead pay a health and mana cost, which is the same as if he did take damage and expended resources to clear it. Then, if he wants to accelerate the clear, he can smite the grove instantly to wipe out the whole camp, almost like how regular junglers do the same thing. Couldn't have designed it better myself. Therefore, Ivern's active abilities are about what you would expect on a controller. Root Caller is a long-range projectile that roots the first target struck, just like Morgana and Lux Q. But his root's unique property is that anyone who clicks on the rooted enemy while close by immediately dash within attack range, another cleverly designed way for him to have effective ganks. Controllers are usually immobile, giving them this high-risk, high-reward playstyle of excelling at catching enemies out, but being easy to catch out themselves in return. This way, Ivern and his teammates can close the distance for very effective ganks. Of course, supports need team utility, and that's where Trigger Seed comes into play. He places a shield on himself, an ally, or his summon Daisy, which explodes after a short delay, dealing magic damage and slowing enemies around them. 
Very few shields have a damaging effect that comes after. The only other one I can think of is Scion Soul Furnace. This is also a good way for him to have a source of damage in his kit since he'll run into skirmishes and whatnot in the early game. His W and Ultimate take care of the controlling part, as Brushmaker can give him fun ways to play around line of sight, while Daisy is a huge stoning tool thanks to her big bulk, surprisingly high damage, and her 3 hit knockup. Every ability in Ivern's kit does a good job at covering every base you would need to cover as a jungler and a support, so thematically and conceptually speaking, I'd say they did a fantastic job at designing him. It's just too bad that people don't like playing the guy or playing against him. I don't blame them. He is the living embodiment of weird, not just in the way he looks, but the way he plays. A large part of why no one plays Ivern is more of a psychological thing and not a practical one. I mentioned that with the way the jungle was designed, it's open to the most diversity in champ selection, but there still is an overarching mentality jungle champions have, in that each one is designed to be as self-sufficient as possible and have a very high capacity to carry games. Ivern is, for all intents and purposes, the antithesis of that. He's a support, the role designed to enable their teammates to carry, not be the carry themselves. He's self-sufficient to an extent, but doesn't follow any of the standard conventions or macro mechanics junglers have, and so they don't feel comfortable playing him because you essentially have to forget everything you know about jungling and relearn it through his lens. Ivern is designed as a catcher, but let's be real, he's a specialist, and one of the things I said about them in that video is that they see League of Legends in a totally different way. Not only is everything different when playing him, but everything goes against the types of instincts players develop as junglers, especially nowadays. Think about how much more the game incentivizes combat as early as possible. Everyone is counter-jungling each other, we're having full-blown 3v3s or 4v4s over Scuttlecrab, level 1 invades like crazy, so naturally the attitude you need in order to be a jungler is one of aggression and confrontation. AFK farming hasn't been meta since Sated Devourer all those years ago. Macro-wise, there's not really much of a difference between Lee Sin, Kha'Zix, Kane, Vi, Olaf, Xin Zhao, Jarvin, Rek'Sai, Rengar, so on and so forth. The gist of every jungler's gameplay is to exert pressure on the map. Conversely, Ivern's entire premise is to remove as much pressure on the map as possible. Thanks to the way his kit was designed, he's really good at wasting your time. Trigger Seed is a big shield and slow on an annoyingly low cooldown. In any given fight, he can get 5 or more shields off before it's over. That's hundreds of damage he can block. Brushmaker can obscure his teammates by hiding them, which can deter enemy pursuit, as loss of vision is a big vulnerability. Daisy is far more difficult to get past than Tibbers or Shaco's clone. Suffocating pressure from the enemy team in some cases can be better than exerting pressure, but it isn't the normal way junglers play the game. You can think of it almost like having to drive in reverse. Possible, but extremely uncomfortable for a lot of players. Supports exist to augment and assist their teammates while deterring and stopping enemies. To do this, many if not all of their abilities are designed to prioritize others, not themselves. Furthermore, a support's ability to alleviate pressure from their teammates is only as strong as their enemies are willing to let them be. He's all alone. Everyone knows how frustrating and smothering Ivern can be in fights because of all the things I mentioned above, but that's usually because he's fighting alongside his teammates. Being a support, he's far less of a threat when by himself, and he's forced to be for the first few levels since double jungling doesn't exist anymore. This gives him one of the most dodgy early games out of any jungler, requiring him to be as non-confrontational as possible, which means avoiding the enemy jungler for the first few levels. Ivern is extremely vulnerable to getting counter-jungled due to his complete lack of combat pressure without someone else or Daisy. His first clear also drains his health and mana far more than other champions, and you can't remedy that by getting better at kiting camps because he doesn't fight them. It isn't until he picks up a few levels and items when he actually becomes a threat. The first 10 minutes of the game are his weakest, and that's also where leads can snowball out of control. Fortunately for him, he spends most of his time ganking and whatnot since he doesn't really have much to do aside from wandering around collecting camps. But whenever he loses, it's usually because the enemy jungler was smart enough to realize your team's jungler is a controller, the weakest class in the early game. What this essentially means is that Ivern has some really nasty counters. Predatory junglers like Olaf, Kha'Zix, Lee Sin, and Rek'Sai can bully him out of his own jungle, and that forces him to call upon his teammates for help to stop the bleeding. But in doing so, they forfeit priority and pressure in their own lanes and everything starts to crumble around you like a house of cards. It's a very delicate situation to handle, which is why Ivern is deceptively difficult to master. You have to go through hell before you reach heaven. Of course, provided everything goes well for you, then you get blessed with the cheesiest mid-game jungler known to man. Speaking of the whole calling upon your teammates for help, that's something you have to deal with for the entire game. Ivern's greatest asset is that he's a secondary support for his team, and compositions with double supports can be an absolute nightmare to go up against as getting through one support is hard enough, let alone two. 
but it means you have to place your trust in top, mid, or ADC to be the main character of the anime. I think you now understand why people don't play this champion. Everyone likes to think AD carries have the biggest ego out of any role, but I honestly think they've been humbled a lot thanks to constantly getting myrtleized by assassins, tanks, and divers for the past 5 years. Nowadays, it feels more like junglers hold the keys to the kingdom. They have the highest carry potential out of any role in light of their ability to influence all three lanes at a time. For all the jungle mains watching this video, let me ask you a question. Be honest, do you trust any of your room temperature IQ laners to carry you through every single game? I bet all of you said no out loud to yourself just now. By playing Ivern, you have to let your teammates steer the wheel while you back them up. Most of the time, double support comps are overpowered enough to where, even if the AD carry flashes smack dab into all 5 members of the enemy team, you and the other support can still bail them out and win fights. But situations like those only occur by the 20 to 25 minute mark when you're all gathered together to start 5v5ing. At any point before then, your top laner might feed 10 kills, your ADC gets toxic with their support, and since you're playing Ivern, you can't pull yourself from your bootstraps and carry the game. Nothing is more agonizing when playing Ivern than bad carries and or falling behind early. That's also why tank junglers aren't played as much either. They can't carry. Have you noticed during Season 10 and 11, there's been nothing but carry junglers. Diana, Viego, Kane, Cossix, Graves, Nidalee, Kindred, Shaco, Karthus. Everyone is picking hard carries because they trust no one but themselves. Not saying that's a bad thing, it's just how things are right now. Not only is trusting your teammates something no one is willing to do in solo queue, but again, Ivern is the only support jungler in the entire game, so essentially, he's permanently considered an off-meta pick. And while the enemy team may not always know how to fight against Ivern, your own team won't know how to utilize you to the fullest either. You could have the most stacked Protect the AD Carry comp in the world, Shen top, Ivern jungle, Karma mid, Tarot support, and Vayne EDC. But if that Vayne is autofill first time Vayne, none of you will matter. Much like other super weak early gamers I talked about in the past such as Victor, Ivern is only at his best when dealing with low damage enemy comps, such as if their top, jungle, and support were all tanks, or if the carries have weak early games themselves like Twitch and Jinx. His worst matchup would be 4 carries, like if the enemy team is Wukong top, jungle Cossix, Annie mid, Sumida bot. Well, that sounds like every team composition nowadays. Okay, so really quickly, I want to talk about one other thing before we wrap things up. Normally, at the end of every Why No One Plays, I try to think of ways to make the champion popular, such as buffing certain things or reworking abilities. Ivern's an exception. I think he was intentionally designed to be a niche pocket pick that only a few people play since everything about him goes against what being a jungler is, right down to clearing camps. That said, I still want to give it a try. So let's retroactively tackle each problem. Problem 1 is that people don't like playing him because he doesn't fit the mold of a traditional jungler. That's because he's the only support jungler, so a way to tackle that would be to potentially normalize support junglers. After all, carry junglers only became a thing starting Season 6 or so after Riot gave more access to resources and experience. Junglers were known as the second support back in the day. Problem 2 is his really risky early game. Okay, I'm not sure how we can fix that one without overbuffing him and nerfing the crap out of his counters. Maybe make it so he doesn't lose that much health from clearing camps, that's about all I can think of. As for problem 3, I think one thing they can do is make Daisy like really strong, such as giving her a huge attack speed buff if Ivern uses Trigger Seed on her. It incentivizes players to shield Daisy instead of the 0 and 7 Yasuo. Summons in League tend to be nothing more than decoys or minor inconveniences to body block certain hits, but if Ivern's ultimate was strong enough to be a legitimate threat, maybe that could give him some genuine solo carry potential. Although, that brings the conundrum of Enchanter's support being able to 1v9 carry, which will likely cause Ivern to bleed into other lanes like top and support, and then that's a flex pick nightmare. Man, that really bothers me. After making the off-meta video, I was mulling over why it feels like players always complain about how broken something is, or how this, or how that, yet whenever Riot or some player tries to innovate or do something new, everyone calls them a troll. Ivern has a fantastic design all things considered, but he's a victim of circumstance through no fault of his own. The only reason no one plays him is just because he's not normal, and yet when people follow the norm they get called out for being meta slaves or abusing OP stuff. See, this is why gamers would make terrible game designers, because even we don't know what we want. Anyway, I'll stop before this explodes into a rant. Let me know what you guys think about Ivern. Although I'm anticipating all of you are probably gonna say you're glad no one plays him since he's a bitch and a half to fight, I feel the same way, honestly. If you enjoyed the video, it would be awesome if you could leave a like, consider subbing to the channel for more content like this, follow me on my socials and join my Discord server if you haven't yet, and don't forget to check out my other Why No One Plays episodes after this one, but for now, 
Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon for the next one. Take care.